And a special welcome to our next speaker from Mark Fitzpatrick, KCNQ2 in Ireland. So Scotty knows Mark, and that gives me an opportunity to, to introduce you to my dear friend, Scotty Sims, who's the American president of the KCNQ2 Cure Foundation. And Scotty started a page for her daughter when her daughter was one of only a few in the world. And Scotty was the person who reached out to us so that we knew that there was somebody else in the world besides Jacqueline. If anybody knows me very well, there are a lot of things I do, but Facebook, I'm rubbish at. So you need people who are really great. I know, all of those who've tried to connect, that's like send me an email, whatever. Facebook, I'm not that good. So thank goodness for people who are awesome at social media. That is only the tip of the iceberg in terms of what Scotty Sims does. So join me in a welcome to the American KCNQ2 Cure President, Scotty Sims. Okay. Um, hi, I want to thank you so much for this. Um, so I am here today as a co-founder of the KCNQ2 Cure Alliance, and I'm also the mother to our seven-year-old daughter, Harper, who has KCNQ2 encephalopathy. She has occasional seizures, autism, and intellectual disability. To have a loved one, especially a child, with a severe, debilitating, catastrophic, and as of yet, untreatable disease is to feel powerless. I felt powerless for the first six undiagnosed months of her life. Powerless as I watched her body contort into 50 or more seizures a day. Powerless as they continuously hooked up EEG leads to her, to her head and face which left burn, burn marks. Powerless as they wheeled her out of the room for yet another spinal tap. And powerless as she was given countless medications with horrific side effects with no alleviation from her symptoms. Powerless when they told us that she would not leave the hospital and we had her baptized in the NICU. But that changed for me, not because a cure was found for her disorder, but because I found something to do. Six months after Harper was born, my husband and I stumbled upon the first published research article on KCNQ2 encephalopathy. Thank you, Ingrid. And thanks to Sarah Wekhusen. My husband and I knew that a window had finally been opened. Then, as one of 30 documented cases of KCNQ2 encephalopathy in the world, my husband and I struggled to find anything. You see, my career pre-KCNQ2 was a mental health counselor. So I did what I knew best. I searched the internet and reached out to the four families that we had been in contact with, and I started an online support group. I spent countless hours on the internet looking for families. I would find a newspaper article here, a church bulletin there, a blog somewhere else, and of course over nine months, I contacted 23 families in nine different countries, and one of those was the Butcher family. So with no resources, no approved therapies, my husband and I hopped on the first plane and met Sarah James to meet the only U.S. researcher we could find that knew anything about KCNQ2 at the time. We brought Harper into his lab. We changed her diaper on his office floor. <laughs> and I literally handed her to all his research assistants and said to each one, this is our daughter, Harper. She is not a sequence variant. She is not a gene mutation. She is a beautiful, loving little girl who deserves every right to a better life. And when you come to work every day, this is who I want you to think about. So we started an international foundation supporting research and awareness for KCNQ2. You see, as a parent to a child with a rare disorder, starting an international foundation was the easy part. I have become an expert in navigating a complicated healthcare system. I learned early on that medicine is not an exact science. Doctors and specialists who don't always look at the entire child but are rather trained to talk and communicate, they don't always collaborate in the meaningful way that is helpful to us as parents. 
So not knowing what we could do, we reached out to the few experts we knew, and we held our first family and professional summit. Any parent of a child with a rare disorder not only has a full plate, but it is overflowing. Like you, on a daily basis, I am fighting for my child's needs to be heard. Because she has a rare disorder that does not fall into those well-known categories like Down syndrome, cerebral palsy, who have strong communities with money, research, advocates, and have voices. But our voices are often lost in the masses. And I all know you know what I mean. Nobel Peace Laureate, Nobel Peace Laureate Juan Gary Mathal tells the story of a hummingbird with a forest fire. In the story, the hummingbird is being the forest is being consumed by the fire. All the animals come out transfixed as they watch the forest burn. They felt overwhelmed and powerless, all except for the hummingbird. It says, I'm going to do something about this fire. So it flies to the nearest stream and picks up a few drops of water, goes to the forest and drops them on again and again and again. In the meantime, all the animals, the much bigger animals, the elephants, the lions, the tigers, come out and watch and stand there helpless. And they are saying to this hummingbird, what do you think you are doing? You are so little and so tiny. You cannot make a difference. Your wings are so small. And the hummingbird turns to them with each drop of water and says, but I am doing the best I can. So all of you here today have the option to carry water. You can choose not to sit by and watch the forest burn. Whether you are a small hummingbird with little drops of water or an elephant or a lion or a tiger, you can join us in putting out this fire. In the mysteries and complexities of rare disease, we cannot know how much of a difference we will make or if we will succeed. But what we know is that we can keep carrying the water. Today we are asking for your assistance into putting out the fire before us because these are our children. They are not labels. They are not gene mutations. And they are not sequence variants. They are beautiful and loving human beings that deserve every right to a better life. Thank you. Thank you.